A few years ago, archaeologists discovered a 3,000-year-old stone disc containing 29 carved markings at a hill fort in northeastern Italy. Recently, a paper written by an archaeologist and an astronomer argued that the markings may represent stellar asterisms. However, at least one astronomer is doubtful of the evidence provided to support this hypothesis. In this video, I discuss this intriguing paper. Before I get started on the particulars of this discovery, I want to give a bit of context. This artifact was found at a Bronze Age hill fort in the Italian province of Trieste, close to the Istria Peninsula. During the Bronze Age, Istria was home to what's been called the Castellieri culture, named after their hill forts, the Castellieri. There were around 100 of these fortified settlements on the peninsula, most of which were on the coast. The majority of the peninsula is covered by modern-day Croatia, with small tracts of Slovenia and Italy situated in its north. Over time, the Castellieri culture also established sites in what are now called Friuli and Dalmatia. Based on their archaeological contexts, the artefacts I'm going to talk about today, along with some other similar ones, are thought to have been created by the Castellieri culture, although exactly when is debatable. The disc was discovered a few years ago during excavations at the Castellieri di Rupin Piccolo, on the border between Italy and Slovenia. It was one of a pair found close to the southeastern entrance of the hill fort. This hill fort was occupied from the early Bronze Age between 1800 and 1650 BCE up until the late Iron Age around 400 BCE. And unlike other similar structures in the region, is made up of massive stone blocks. I have heard the word Cyclopean thrown around when referring to the Castellieri culture in general, but I can't find any photographs that prove such construction techniques were used. Since I do love Cyclopean walls, though, I'll keep looking. The Rupin Piccolo's ramparts were around 7 metres in width and comprised two parallel walls made up of large stones, with the space in between filled with smaller stones. This is a construction technique I've mentioned before when discussing Bronze Age fortifications in other regions as well. The fort had two entrances in the northeastern and southeastern corners and belonged to a cluster of four hill forts. The stone discs are 50 centimetres in diameter and 30 centimetres thick. One is not decorated with carvings, but the other contains 24 chisel markings on one side and five chisel markings on the other side. Two researchers, the archaeologist Federico Bernardini and astronomer Paolo Malaro, argue in the journal Astronomische Nachrichten that these carvings could represent the night sky. The stone that is without decoration was nonetheless purposefully shaped and flattened, so the authors suggest it may have been produced to represent the sun. On the decorated disc, although the front surface is not natural, the researchers do not think the chisel markings are a byproduct of any sort of flattening process. They think that the markings were made with a metal chisel with a 6 to 7 millimeter point. A chisel like this was found at the Castellieri di Aleri, which is just several kilometers away. To see if the markings correlate with the night sky, the researchers used the software Stellarium and positioned groups of carvings over different asterisms. The nine markings on the centre of the front side of the disc, referred to as Group 1, matched the tail of Scorpius best. Each marking varied in how deeply it was cut, and in the case of Group 1, the deepest mark of 22 millimetres correlated with the star Antares, which is the brightest star in Scorpius. A further statistical analysis was carried out to calculate the probability of such a correlation being accidental. This found that the chance of such carvings randomly forming such a pattern is low. Six chisel marks labelled as Group 2 were found to correspond with the constellation of Orion, specifically the three stars that form the belt and the two brightest stars Betelgeuse and Rigel. However, one marking in this group, N10, did not correlate to any stars in Orion. Nine chisel marks labelled as Group 3 and positioned close to Scorpius's tail were overlaid with the Pleiades. Their distance from Group 2, which could be equated with Orion, is five times the length of Orion's belt. When looking for the Pleiades in the night sky, this is a sort of rough measurement that is used to find it. So if this group does represent the Pleiades, it's in approximately the right place on the disc. Only six markings had a good match with stars from the Pleiades constellation. 
The match wasn't as good for three of the markings, which correspond to Pleione, Maya and Asterope. Another problem with this particular correlation is that the Pleiades stars are very close to one another, and if the same scale were used as had been used for group 1 and group 2, then they would all have to be concentrated in the space of a single chisel mark. It's also quite unusual for nine stars in that cluster to be seen easily with the naked eye. The five chisel marks on the back of the disc correlate well with the constellation Cassiopeia. Similar statistical analyses were used for group 2, group 3 and the group on the reverse of the disc as was used for group 1 and all of these analyses found that the probability of such correlations occurring by chance are low. A few suggestions were made for the marking N10 that didn't appear to correlate with any known stars. This included the idea that it represented a star in Orion that existed when the stone was carved but which has since then exploded as a supernova. Another problem with the hypothesis is that Scorpius and Orion cannot be seen in the sky on the same night. In fact, they would need to be carved around six months apart. The authors suggest that maybe they marked two key times in the year that were important to the inhabitants of the site for agricultural planning. The exact date of the two discs isn't known with any certainty. It's thought they were contemporary with the fort, but since it was in use for more than 1,000 years, it's not clear if the discs were created early or late in its habitation. Other circular blocks were found in the Archaeological Museum at Aquileia, and these are thought to be Roman tomb lids, so it's possible that the discs belong to Roman times. Another disc was found at Gradina on the Brion Maggiore island off the southern coast of Istria in Croatia. This was covered with shallow depressions on one side, but it was concluded that they had been made naturally by marine bivalves prior to the disc being cut. However, since it is of a similar shape and size and was dated to the Middle Bronze Age based on its archaeological context, then it's possible that the disc from Rupin Piccolo is also Middle Bronze Age. There's also an argument that the stone disc dates to the Early Bronze Age around 1800 BCE because the southernmost star in the Scorpius constellation could be viewed better from Rupin Piccolo at that time due to precession of the equinoxes. Also, in the second undecorated disc found at Rupin Piccolo, there are two half-wedge holes which would have been created to help with the extraction and shaping of the block. Such wedge holes seem to connect the disc to the same quarries that were used to build the ramparts early in the fort's construction. In an article in Life Science, Ed Krupp, the director of the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles, says that, and I quote, Does the paper argue a persuasive case? No, it doesn't. For me, the paper is over-argued and the invocation of an imaginary supernova is indicative. The article in Life Science says that Krupp is currently working on a study to identify asterisms in rock art and that this is due for publication in a few months. That sounds interesting. No one is saying that the ancients didn't map the night sky. It's just that proving it is quite difficult and in this particular paper I personally think the evidence isn't wholly convincing. There seems to be a lot more against the idea than for it. The supernova, the scale of the Pleiades representation, Scorpius and Orion being next to each other, it seems like a bit of a stretch. That said, I hadn't read much before on the Castellieri culture so this particular artifact has got me intrigued to learn more. That's it, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. I got a new channel member last week, so welcome to the party, and I'll see you next time.